Hey everyone and welcome back to my Enjoy Mechatronics YouTube channel. So recently we've seen how to use the ESP8266 or the ESP32 to create some projects like controlling some devices wirelessly using the Wi-Fi capability that comes with these microcontrollers. But we are using the local area network. That means you could only control these devices or see some sensor data using your local network and the range is limited. Today we are going to use one of the methods that allows you to control your devices from anywhere in the world using Firebase. By the end of this video, we will be able to control this LED. And without any further ado, let's dive right in. So to follow along with our tutorial, you will need one of these microcontrollers like the ESP8266 or the ESP32. Today we are going to use this microcontroller and you will need an LED with a 220 ohm resistor or 100 and to make the connections I'm gonna use this breadboard we don't need to use some jumper wires so I will connect it directly this is the positive lead and here we have the digital pin number 4 and I'm gonna put the other leg to the other side then I will add the ohm resistor and connect it to the GND so that we can complete the circuit in our next videos, we are going to control some high voltage devices using the relay module and create our home automation project. Also, we could send some data like this sensor data that allows you to detect the gas leaking, but we are going to create this project later on. Then I will connect the USB cable. And let's move on to the computer. First of all, you have to go to this link, firebase.google.com. And if you don't know what is Firebase, it's the Google's app development platform that allows you to use some of the tools that comes with it. In our case, we are going to use the database that allows you to store some data and be able to control our ESP32 and interact with it from anywhere in the world. Of course, you need to have a Gmail account and I'm already logged in using the email. Then we can get started by pressing this button. You notice that the language is set to French. I'm gonna change it to English. Now we can create our project and let's give it a name like ESP32 LED control. Also, we have to accept the Firebase terms and I will confirm. Then we can hit continue. The Firebase platform provides you with other tools like Google Analytics. You could enable this option, but we are not going to use it for now. We don't need it. Then we can create the project and I think it will take about a minute to set up the project. Then we can hit continue. As you can see, we can build the apps for mobile as well as for the web. Also, we have Unity. And this is Flutter that allows you to create your mobile applications. On top, we have the project name. You could also create another one by adding a new project. Now we'll be able to use one of the biggest features of the Firebase platform, which is storing the real-time database. In our case, we are going to store the state of the LED. Then we'll use the ESP32 to get that state from the real-time database so that we can turn the LED on and off. We can go to Build. And here we have real-time database. Let's create it using this button. So the information will be stored in the cloud. Here we can set the location. I'm gonna set it as default, United States. Then we can hit next. And here we have two options. One that is called locked mode, but in this case, you won't be able to read or write the data. That's why I'm gonna use the uh, test mode. In our next videos, I'm gonna show you how to use the locked mode. I'm gonna enable it. And here we can create some kind of a variable that stores the data. By default, we have null. Let's press the plus icon. The key is like the name of the data. For example, we can use LED state or LED slash state. And here I'm going to use a value. Zero means off and one is on. By default, we can set it to off and we can specify the data type. Here we have different options like Boolean, number, object, and strings. In our case, we are using numbers. Now to have access to this information from anywhere in the world, we can use our ESP32 to access it as well as the smartphone and control the LED as long as you have internet connection. Here we are missing something, which is the security part. The Firebase platform allows you to add some authentication features. For example, we can set the email and the password of the users that can access the LED state. To do that, we can go under build and authentication of course, you are not going to implement that. It is created for you using Firebase. As you can see, we have different options like email and password, phone. Also, we can use Google, Facebook, and so on. And these are called providers. In my case, I'm gonna use the email and password. Let's enable this option. 
and hit save. At this point, we haven't added the users that can access the database. Let's go under users and add a new one. For the email, I'm going to use my own and you can set the password. So the user in this case is our ESP32 microcontroller. Let's open up the Arduino IDE. I've already created a basic code that allows you to control the ESP32. Basically, we are going to use a library from the library manager. Just search for Firebase ESP client and let's go down here. The library that we need is this one. I think it's the best Google Firebase Arduino client library that allows you to control the ESP8266 and use it with the ESP32 as well. Make sure to hit the install button. For me, I've already done that. Now let's explain the code. On top, we are including the Wi-Fi library that comes with the ESP32 package. If you haven't already done that, I will add the link of the video under the description. Make sure to check it out. Next, we are including our Firebase ESP client library. So we have few variables that we need for our project, like the Wi-Fi SID and password, because our ESP32 needs to be connected to the internet. Next, we have few variables that are related to the Firebase platform. The first one is the API key. To find it, you have to go to the project. It is located under the settings, project settings. And here's the API key that we're going to use. I'm going to copy it and paste it under Arduino IDE. The next thing that it needs is the database URL. It is under build and real time database. You can copy it from here and let's paste it. The username, email and password that we have set from the project. It is located under authentication. We have our user and here we have few variables or objects like the Firebase data that we use to store the data from the Firebase and access it from here. Next, we have this Firebase authentication object and another one that is called Firebase config. We're going to use these to set the username, password, the URL, as well as the API key. And finally, we have few variables that are related to our project, like the LED pin. I have connected to the digital pin number four and under the setup function, we have the pin mode so that we can use the LED pin as an output device and control it by turning it on and off. Also, we have the serial monitor. Then we are connecting our microcontroller to the Wi-Fi network using the SID and the password. And here we are checking if it's not connected, we wait. Otherwise, we print the local IP address. We are setting the API key using the config object that we have created on top. And this one is used to store the email and password. And finally, we are assigning the real-time database URL. Now we can move on to the loop function, which is called over and over again. Here we are checking if the Firebase is ready. That means we can access it. If you don't know, the loop function is called over and over again so fast. That's why we need to add a delay, like one second, which means 1000 milliseconds. In such case, we're going to create this variable LED state. Then we use firebase.rtdb, which stands for real-time database. Dot, and we have this method get int to get an integer. Of course, we have other options like get boolean, get string, and that depends on the data type under the real time database. Here we have created an integer or a number. This function takes some parameters like the Firebase data object that we use to store the data. Next, we have the path. In our case, we are using LED slash state. And the last parameter is the variable that we are going to store the data inside it. And this function returns a boolean, which could be true or false. So if the process is done successfully, it's going to be true. In such case, we are going to write the value and control the LED using the digital write command. So if it's zero, it's going to turn the LED off. But if it's one, it's going to turn it on. Otherwise, we are printing the error using serial.println to access the reason we use the Firebase data object dot error reason and convert it to a string or C string. And that's pretty much it. Now we can test our project and check if it's working. To upload the code, we have to select the kind of board that we are using. In my case, I'm using the ESP32. If you are using another board, make sure to change it from here. Once you do that, we can upload the code using this button. And here we have the percentage. As I said, you will find the code under the video description. We are going to use it a lot in our next projects. And there you go, it's done uploading. To check that our ESP32 gets connected to the internet, I'm going to open up the serial monitor and make sure to select the same baud rate, 115-200. And let's try to reset it. And there you go, it's connecting. 
we have the local IP address that we can use to control the LED uh, locally. For now, I'm going to change this value from the Firebase project and hit enter. And there you go, the LED turns on. Also, we can set it to zero. And the LED turns off. To make sure that I'm right, I'm not going to use the same network, which is called Hexabyte. Instead, I'm going to use the mobile data. For now, the state is set to zero. Let's use the value one and hit go or enter. The LED turns on. Also, we can turn it off. So I think that's pretty much it, guys, for this video. I hope you like it. If you have any question or comment, make sure to write it under the comment section down below. And I will see you in the next one.